Are mountains artificial? Welcome to another video, and I'm going to begin with this map of Mercador just to pose this question, because this is the map where I began to officially question this idea. Now, of course, some people will question the idea of whether this continent even exists. But what really caught me was these mountains that surround this whole island. And really just the landmass itself appears to have a created look, you know, a very a very intelligent design, not a random landmass. And so the landmass itself seems intelligent, and as well do the mountains surrounding them, you know, which really poses the question, you know, were these landmasses created by design? And recently I watched a new video by Wise Up, and he was citing some work by a calm, I'm sorry, forgive me, I forget the name now, but uh, how he was showing France and that France appeared to the whole continent, you know, the whole uh, region of France appeared to be Starfort-like, you know, and so here we are looking at Starforts, which I think is really important work. But yet, you know, do we step back even further and say, wow, this whole landmass is, uh, you know, at least shaped, shaped in some form intelligently by, you know, by something much older than, you know, here we're speculating on, you know, buildings and, and uh, more recent, you know, within thousands of years, and in some cases within hundreds. But, I mean, this is old. I mean, we're talking about titans here and, and you know, the creation of, of land. And, you know, I thought the same things with the Oral Mountains in Russia and the same thing with the Himalayas, that these appear to be walls. I mean, walls to keep people out. And what a great wall. I mean, if you had, you know, uh, you know if you were a larger people, then, yes, you know, you're going to start. In any case, I can only speculate, and, and, and I don't want to get too speculative at this point in the video, but let me jump on to the next part. And it actually brings me to an old book that I've... Not even an old book, they're old magazines, old French magazines from the uh, early 1900s that... Uh, that ended up in my possession, and this is uh, this is one example. And so, yeah, they're. Uh, let me see this one. Okay, so this one's 1901. This is the oldest one, actually. But but yeah, they're they're French um, journals, and really, really, really fascinating. Uh, I recently acquired them. And I, I don't read French very well. You know, I can read, you know, enough, maybe like more than half, but, but not very much more. But in any case, uh, I really look forward to, to dissecting these. And, you know, just as an example, I don't want to get too off topic, but really, really fascinating stuff. I mean, this is from 1900, and, you know... Just, just to get an idea, I mean, let's look at this beautiful city here in, I guess, in 1900. It's in a, you know, can't be any later. And then we look at where it is, and it's in uh, Shanghai. Shanghai. And, you know, here's a Japanese school, Ecole Japonaise. And so really, really fascinating. I, I can't wait to, you know, I almost want to pick, um, you know, pick one section, one book 
at a time to you know really give them justice and certainly I want to photograph them just to document as much as I can yeah really 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 fascinating and I look forward to you know really dissecting these but in any case let me jump to um, this picture of you know, here we are speaking of giants. You know, let me get back on topic again. We are speaking of giants. And in this old book, you know, we have this depiction. The village in construction um, and her and their and its architect. Uh, you know, madam this madam here. You know, so they're saying that, you know, this lady built these little Homes, you know, and you know, I don't know. It just seemed to me like if I didn't see that picture of the lady and and you, and you saw these homes, you know, you might think that this is uh, le uh, legitimacy. I mean, that this is real size, and I don't know. I don't know, because these seem like, you know, some of these seem like ruins. I mean, look at this. Do you, do you think she built, you know, this this way? Or is this ruined? Is this ancient? I mean, has it been damaged? And just a portion of the, the column is showing. I mean, what really, they seem, they seem old. These seem like older... I don't know, and I would love to see the inside and, and know if this is still here. And I believe this was somewhere in in France, uh, the House of Bernays right here. Really fascinating though. And and so I thought, you know, could this could this lady, you know, have been you know, and, and that might seem silly. In any case, that's what I thought of when I first saw this. I saw a video recently. I mean, look at this. Really? Like, really? Somebody built this miniature stonework? Like, hewn stonework? All miniature? I don't know. Or was this a smaller people? Or are we the smaller people, and 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 she was larger, and and you know they had cameras, and she's photographing this. I don't know, and I found it just absolutely fascinating. And here's where I'm going to jump next with this. So I found this on Flat Earth British Channel, and this is from an old Gallica book. And what we see is, you know, these giants, or I don't know, again, regular people carrying, you know, this I imagine in the center of a square in some grand city. I mean, this is like some giant, you know, thing. And here these giants are setting it down. I mean, they, are, they appear to be, and this book appears to be depicting you know, a reset and the recreation of a of the next civilization, you know, as if these are like doll houses and, you know, they're putting it together and, and maybe taking some things apart or or, you know, vice versa. And here again, let's let's look here. You see how they're carrying this castle. And they're carrying smaller castles on sticks. I mean as if these you know, were just uh, printed or made. In some pictures that Martin showed, you have little people. Little people amongst these, which, you know, the artist wanted there to be a reference and, and let us know that, yes, there were little people at knee height along with these people. And, and yes, now we can see buildings, which would be more uh, reality size. So, I, I mean, I think they're painting a pretty good depiction here. And so yeah, this seems like a reset time. Here are these 
Guys are carrying the fascies and, and joking and having a good old time. I mean, these guys are not going to lose this battle or this event. Just a good old time going on here in the trumpets and dressed uh, very loosely, you know. These people are, these people know exactly what they're doing and what's going on. And look here, we have extinct, uh, you know, like, uh, this is a latin -y word. I mean, we know this is like an extinction. Um, so, yeah, really interesting, you know, and I really, you know, again, I saw the old French books first, and then I saw these, and it really reminded me, you know, what is going on, and, uh, you know, could a lot of the things that we see, you know, that we wonder, how did we build? How did us puny little humans build these things? Well, maybe we didn't, you know, and I think we realize that now, we do, but maybe, uh, you know, there could be a lot more to it. Even the older pictures from the 1800s that we see, um, you know, rarely, if we do see buildings, it appears, or building, it appears that we see renovation, rather. And, uh, and even in that renovation, we don't see people, you know, we don't see a force of people gathered, uh, working, a crew. No, we might see a few guys in suits, and it always looks like it might be Sunday, and, you know, people are taking the day off. But yes, uh, really, really interesting. I mean, who is, again, building these structures? And uh, this old book, this old magazine, really, uh, really blew me away when I saw this. Really, really interesting. Something, you know, even this little building appears to have a little mud flooding next to it, you know. And this kind of makes sense, you know. Like, sometimes it does look as if, you know, we are just tiny ants. And, you know, someone just dumped mud or dumped sand and very easily covered up a civilization as if so now you know if the people are this size or you know the people are this size then it becomes very easily uh, achieved the reset this wall this great wall of Peru and really fascinating this I knew of the Nazca lines and of course the amazing polygonal stonework and the megaliths and, you know, we all know what we know. You know, there is somewhat of a knowledge about what is known, but yet this to me, this wall of Peru, absolutely fascinating. You know, running along this river, I, I was really amazed with, uh, again, this old French book and this wall. Let me show you a few more pictures of it and again things I had never seen and this is a amphitheater in Peru Here we have the amphitheater in Peru which I'd never seen um, Pampas de Maras 25 kilometers to the north of Cusco really fascinating and, and you know, are we seeing a quarry or an amphitheater? I think it seems very amphitheater-like. Or just tech, you know, just the faintest remnants and husk of you know, leftover civilization. And here, you know, it shows a map of this wall and how absolutely enormous it is. And this baby just, you know, runs, runs and runs, just like a lot of the things. I mean, you have an ancient highway that I, you know, I'd love to make a video just on the ancient highway that runs, uh, an ancient road that runs along the coast, and, and you can tell it's it's been there a long time. So here are some examples of the, of the wall. In some areas it's very well preserved, and in some areas it's completely, you know, you might not, even recognize it. And this was interesting. I mean, this was over Peru, and I don't think these look natural. I don't know what's going on there, but it was really interesting. You know, I think uh, I think they're telling us that these are just dunes shaped like croissants or crescents. 
And this is a really fascinating road. The mysterious uh, bouton, uh, the mysterious buttons. And so, yeah, I mean, I'd seen a lot of, uh, of course, the Nazca lines and everything else, but never seen this ancient road of buttons. And that is worth, you know, a little more research, that's for sure. Really interesting. And I think that's it for these. This was just a volcano in the Andes, which uh, I thought was really interesting, too. And another one, another older research in 1931. Here it depicts again the wall. You can see how massive, massive, massive it is. And there were some great pictures here. I mean, this looks like Mud Flood Central. You know, this place has just been... This reminds me of things where I live, too. I mean, where a single shrub won't grow because it's been mud flooded so hard. And this was really interesting. This was what I was looking for. And a lot of things like this along the ancient wall. So really fascinating. I mean, I've seen things like this in Africa, even. And uh, really worth a study. A lot of ruins. And what I consider to this day to still be unexplored ruins along this ancient wall. And, you know, there's so much to explore, really. I think, uh, I think it's interesting that we could find an old book from the early 1900s and discover things about our past. But that is what it's all about, because everything has been rewritten and discarded and books have been burned for eons. And even in uh, my old... Uh, my old French book here, I didn't show you guys this picture, but there was a picture of the Vatican, and it shows the Vatican Library, La Bibliothèque Vatican, that was, you know, it looks to me like it's been bombed, you know, it just, the center just fell out, and it was very suspicious, I, I read a little bit on it, but yeah, I mean, you know, look, what was destroyed, you know, here's all these books, here's a great example, you know, what was, what was here, or were they, most likely, they were probably removed and put, uh, you know, in some private collection somewhere, and, you know, then this catastrophe, you know, mysteriously occurs, so, yeah, that's kind of how those things usually happen, and here again was just a quick little article showing how this wall you know, looks, you know, on the edge of some mountain sometimes. And, and you know, I think we all have things like this where we live and in our areas. I know I certainly do. And I just thought it was really interesting, you know, that this is really going to be the remains of ancient civilization and how we might just think, especially here in the Southwest, I mean, you see this all over the place. And I now think, you know, I really think uh, twice when I see things like this. I don't think natural. And so, yeah, here's examples of this wall. This person did a good job here on this uh, blog, or I'm not sure what. Let me see, sorry. Uh, yes, here it is. And yeah, great, uh, great images of this wall. And look at this entrance into the wall. And look how thick and massive, absolutely massive this is. So... That's it. That's just, uh, I've probably gone longer than I intended, but, uh, you know, I hope this was uh, a little eye-opening in a way. And thank you so much for joining me. Now, here is one straight out of the weird file. Um, while I was editing this video, I came to this part where I talked about Victor, uh, the man who took the Beatles and created uh, levitating devices from the wings and the patterns found, found underneath the second pair of wings. But in any case, what, why I'm making this little video is while I was editing, I noticed this. I don't know if you, you can pick that up. There it is. 
and this little vortex here, this little vortex field. And I said, what is that? That's not part of my pictures. I mean, this, everything else was part of my pictures. And yet that vortex, I, I you know, it didn't show up when I, when I scrolled on it here. This little pink vortex here. And so what is my last picture? My last picture is not this picture, actually. This picture is underneath, and I laid this on top because I was too lazy to delete all the other pictures. And originally, I thought I was going to use these other pictures and fuse the two videos together, but I didn't end up doing that. But in any case, back to this little vortex, what is the last picture associated with this particular clip here? And that is this man. And what is he doing? He's creating a vortex. He's creating a magnetic field, allowing him to levitate. And the only other thing I can see with this picture is that I added this little note here. Uh, be the change. Start where you left off. And I added an effect, you know, for this little title which you can see here shooting across the top screen. It's like a little, I think it's called pixie dust. But the pixie dust is not in a vortex. You know, I can stop it at any point here and you don't see a vortex. But yet, in conjunction with this photograph, and, you know, the naked eye can only see so much, and yet this camera, I believe, is catching the full spectrum, even though we can't see it. And it perhaps is capturing the magnetic field, and with a little pixie dust here from my tidal effect sprinkled over it, we have here a summarization of the events which gives us this beautiful vortex. And really, really fascinating and absolutely random. I don't know what I'll do with this video, but I just had to make it and perhaps I'll share it.